All right. So to start, can you please spell and say your name? Yes. Um, my name is Genesis Dancer. That's G-E-N-I-S-I-S. -I -S, and the last name is D-A-N-C-E-R. Thank you. You're welcome. So today is Friday, May 25th, 2018, and I'm talking with Genesis Dancer at Pig Pounder Brewery in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for coming. Um, to start, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. You'll probably notice that I don't have a Southern accent. Um, I currently live on 37 acres in Stoneville, which is almost an hour north of here. Um, my partner is a firefighter and we have uh, goats, chickens, a little dog and a two-year-old son. And we live in a yurt. That's interesting. That's an interesting. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's it's like a roundhouse, and it is kind of tent-like, and it has all the um, all the benefits and drawbacks of a tent. <laughs> like what? Uh, it's incredibly loud when it rains, so you're just not going to be watching a movie when it rains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how did you get here to Greensboro? Uh, Oddly enough, it was my first like big girl job. Um, I worked for a big company called Ecolab, which you might be familiar with. Um, they sell cleaning and sanitization chemicals. Um, and they offered me a position at the corporate office and paid to move me out. And it was kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. So out I came and here I stayed. Very cool. So how did you go from that to brewing? What was your, <laughs> what was your foray into brewing? So um, my specialty at Ecolab, I was a registered sanitarian. So I did like food safety type audits like a health inspector would, but um, for private grocery store chains. Um, so, um, and my, my first job out of college was in quality assurance. So I have like that quality assurance sanitation background, but after a couple years in a felt lined cubicle, I decided I couldn't handle it anymore and um, quit my job at Ecolab and I spent a couple years working in cafes and waiting tables and um, just kind of generally like riding my mountain bike and bumming around, which was fantastic. Um, but after uh, working at a fine dining restaurant where the chef would like scream at you if orders were wrong, <laughs> I decided that um, I should start looking for another big kid-ish job. And um, the former head brewer here, Sam Rose, um, actually had this job for assistant brewer posted on Craigslist. So I stumbled upon that and I thought it was kind of a long shot because I only had, you know, a little bit of home brewing experience. Um, uh, but he hired me. So and when I've been was here that? almost four years now. I think we opened in 2014 and I started in like maybe March of 2014, um, several months before we opened, before we had any beer in tanks. Um, one of the things that's so cool about my tenure at Pig Pounder is that um, they had this brew house and all the tanks and it had been in storage for 15 years. So the first couple months I was here, um, Sam and I spent um, just ripping everything apart and cleaning it and replacing all the soft parts, all the seals and stuff. So I really know this facility intimately. I've had the whole brew house taken apart. I've changed all the valve seats myself. Um, it is kind of an older system um, with a lot of like manual valve opening and closing. Um, and I think, especially as a new brewer, it was really beneficial for me to do that hands-on stuff from the very beginning and get familiar with the equipment before I ever started brewing on it. And do you know, where was the equipment before? I think that Marty, um, Marty Cotis, our owner, had it in storage from, uh, like a previous tenant of his that went out of business and like their old equipment was just something he inherited. And I think that might've been his inspiration for opening the brewery. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you know, you mentioned only having a little bit of homebrew experience when you started, what resources kind of have you drawn on over time to grow as a brewer? Um, wow. There are just like a ton of resources available because everybody wants to be doing this right now. Um, but I will say that like um, working under a more experienced brewer, Sam Rose, our original head brewer, um, was amazing. Uh, 
he really had me do everything hands-on from the very beginning just with his like watchful eye um which was really important because um i think when people think about brewing of course they're thinking about like the recipes and the different kinds of beer you're going to make but um there's also this huge component of just physically moving stuff around and um how beer gets made on the system that you have. And so for me, that's one of the more exciting aspects of, of being a brewer is just like mechanically moving things around and how your equipment works or doesn't work <laughs> as is often the case. Yeah. Um, so mostly other brewers, yeah. Very cool. Um, so, you know, you, you've been doing this for a while now in styles and the business kind of have changed. Are there particular beer trends today that you're particularly fond of or not fond of? Wow. Or things that you're really looking forward to doing in the near future? Well, I will say that here at Pig Pounder, I'm really excited um, that since Khalif has taken over as head brewer, we're starting to branch out and do more um, American styles of beer. When I first started, Marty's vision was um, to do only English style ales which are amazing and I love, um, but it's not really necessarily what's trendy in the United States right now. And um, they tend to be very like malt forward beers and people are really loving hops or um, especially in the summertime, people like hoppier beers. So I'm really excited that we've kind of like loosened up our brand and are doing more um, branching out with styles. We even did a sour this year. And can you give us maybe maybe an example of one of the ones that you've worked on recently, one of these newer non-English ones that you're particularly excited about? Oh yeah, we did, um, we did a high ABV IPA that we named the Tripping Pigs <laughs> and totally ripped off the Grateful Dead Bears and put it on a t-shirt. And um, we took that beer to Brugaloo in Raleigh last month and it was wildly popular. Um, I think it's great. It's really easy to drink for a beer that's 7.4 ABV, wow. <laughs> which tends to make it popular at beer festivals. People are definitely looking to get messed up. <laughs> um, but the, the, the tie-in with the tie-dye merchandise was really cute. Um, our, uh, our taproom manager and I cut our t-shirts so they looked like edgy and it was just a lot of fun. The beer was fun to make. It took me 15 minutes on a ladder to get all the hops for the dry hop edition into the beer. Oh wow. Getting them in through a little one and a half inch port on the top of the tank is a challenge. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could see that. But I had a lot of fun with that beer. Well, can you talk a little bit about um, you know, some of the work that you're doing now, and uh, I don't even know if you have an average day. So the brewery cycle tends to be more like a week-long cycle. You have a couple of brew days, which is what people are thinking about. Um, and then you generally have at least one day that's completely devoted to cleaning the brew house, cleaning tanks, washing kegs. Um, and then one day where you're moving beer around. So moving finished beer from the fermenters into bright tanks for conditioning and carbonation. Um, so that tends to be like a weekly cycle and it is really repetitive. I think people tend to think of brewing as like a very creative job, but um, as a brewer, you spend most of your time doing pretty repetitive tasks. So you hope that you love it because you're doing the same same things every week. Even just brewing, you're hitting kind of different parameters for different beer styles, but the brew day is very much the same no matter what you're brewing. Um, and I also think people might think that brewing the beer is the challenging part. Um, but there are lots of other things in the brewery that are more challenging than physically just just making the wort. Can you talk about? Yeah, maybe so, some if you have specifics in mind. Yeah, absolutely, I do. <laughs> so here we filter some of our beers. Um, lots of breweries nowadays are using highly flocculent yeast that kind of settle to the bottom of the fermenter really quickly, leaving you with a really clear beer that you can just move right off the yeast and not have to filter it. 
Um, but we have some styles because we work with some special English style yeast that don't tend to settle out very well. Um, we have some styles that need to be filtered and filtration requires a lot of hoses and a lot of different connections, a lot of like very careful sanitation. Um, uh, so that's probably the most challenging thing we do here. Definitely. Um, so over the last four or five years, a lot of things in the beer world here in Greensboro have changed. Yeah. Lots of new places opening up. Can you talk a little bit? You, you know, we don't have a ton of folks who've been here for that whole cycle. Yeah. But you pretty much have. I guess I, guess I have. Like Natty's was here. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And then I think Pryor was right behind us. They were just a few months behind us. But honestly, you know, I don't think I have like as much perspective on that because um, when all those new breweries were opening, it was my first year as a brewer and I was a baby brewer, you know, with no experience. So I spent that year really like keeping my head down, didn't go out and drink a lot of beer, you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking that like I had accidentally left pressure on a tank or something, you know. <laughs> coming to the brewery at three in the morning to double check oh. <laughs> and yeah. having those anxiety dreams all the time. <laughs> so obviously you've calmed those down a bit. Yes. I, you still occasionally like will have a fear that you, that you failed to unhook gas from a tank or something like that. But, um, it's, it's much more manageable after a couple of years of brewing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, the project that I'm working on is focused on women brewers and brewery owners in North Carolina. And so I think for a lot of people, you were talking about some of the stereotypes or pre preconceptions people have about beer and brewing. A lot of folks literally just think of Bearded, guys with white beards, dudes. white yeah. guys with beards. <laughs> um, you know, it's pretty stereotypically categorized that way. Can you talk about maybe some challenges that you feel Hey, or do you feel like you faced any challenges being a woman in what is really a male dominated industry? It still really is. And I can tell you from having attended craft brewing conferences, even just very recently, like last November, that it is still is very, very much male dominated. And the, the dude with the beard stereotype holds very, very true. Um, you know, I don't think that I've faced challenges um, with other brewers necessarily. Um, mostly here it's been uh, with people from outside the brewery. <laughs> yeah. Who ask me questions like, are you allowed to use those tools? Or <laughs> maybe it's a North Carolina thing to refer to like, you know, I'm 37. <laughs> so when a man calls me girl, <laughs> it's, it seems kind of silly. Um, I think um, for me personally, like having to take it, well, not having to take a year off, but taking a year off to have a child was definitely something that, honestly, I probably set my career back a little bit. Um, but that's a challenge for women in any field. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, with challenges, often there are benefits too. Can you think of examples of maybe specific benefits that you feel like you maybe have over? our lovely bearded wow. friends being <laughs> I'm a really woman in the industry. <laughs> I mean, I guess if anything, like if I, if I was like looking to make moves, it, it would be memorable that I'm a female brewer. <laughs> That's really the only thing I can think yeah. of. Yeah. Well, if you, if we had a, a baby brewer coming in right now, yeah. a woman, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give her looking to enter the field today? Um, mostly just that like, um, you're gonna encounter probably some things that are physically challenging for you, but none of them are probably insurmountable. Um, there were some things for me when I first started brewing that were physically difficult, um, but you just have to be creative and use and rely on tools more more mm -hmm. frequently. Um, and uh, it's okay to ask for help because there are a lot of things um, 
in the brewery that are heavy, like a half barrel keg weighs, you know, 160 pounds when it's full and no one, not even a man should be picking that up by themselves, right? Like it's just not good for your back. It's an awkward weight. You can't like center it in your body and lift with your legs. Um, so I give that advice to everybody, but it would especially be true for women or smaller people that mm -hmm. like, um, protecting yourself physically and getting help when you need it is really important. And I can't help but notice your pink boots. Yeah. Now, do you do, are you a member of the pink boots? I am society? actually not. Oh, you just have pink boots. I just have pink boots. So um, oddly enough, Granger stocks two colors of steel toed boots in women's sizes, pink and black. So, <laughs> so they just happen to be pink. It goes with Pig Pounder's theme. It does. Yeah. It so does indeed. Pink floor, so. so you kind of touched on this already, but what's your favorite part? of working as a brewer? What's your favorite thing? Um, probably that it's like a physically active job. Um, I've been athletic my whole adult life and um, sitting in a job every day, I feel like was really like hard on my body and it made staying in shape more difficult. Um, so I just like that I get to like, and I'm kind of an antsy, high energy person. So just the fact that I get to move around most of the day is really great. Um, and it is like a more relaxed environment. You know, I don't have to get dressed up. I'm wearing makeup today, but I don't necessarily always wear makeup to work. Um, and uh, it's just generally like a more relaxed environment than jobs I've had in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're getting into the questions that we were talking about earlier, oh, your favorite yeah. ones. So <laughs> what's your favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own today? Okay, today. I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favorite beer, but I end up drinking a ton of Oscar Blues Dale's Pale Ale because it's available everywhere. It's in cans, which I love, and it's really easy to drink. And um, yeah, I just think it's a, it's a good all around beer. And um, as like crazy as beer industry trends get, like I am one of those suckers who is gonna buy like every weird flavored beer, <laughs> but often you're disappointed by them. So do you have any of the weird ones recently that you've tried that you're a big fan of? I haven't in a while. Um, I always get over to um, Pryor and taste all of Calder's crazy creations. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, I've loved all those. Um, Steven at Little Brother has made some pretty interesting stuff. Um, Brian Carter at Natty's. Um, I love all the beer in this town. It's all great. So. What would you say is the signature beer here at Pig Pounder? That is, su that is such an easy question. So our Northern English style brown, it's called Boar Brown. We've won a ton of awards with it. Um, the year I was pregnant with my son, um, it took home the gold for English Browns at the World Beer Cup. And one of my last days on the job, I was like nine months pregnant. I worked until like maybe two weeks before my son was born. Um, the, the trophy came in, and so I've got a picture of my enormous pregnant belly with the um, with the award from the World Beer Cup. Oh, that's awesome! And yeah. is that one that that's one that's been around since the beginning, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, and that recipe has not changed very much at all. Like a few pounds of grain here and there, but we've really haven't changed that recipe. That was one that Sam Rose developed. Mm -hmm. So that's the signature one. Do you have a favorite? Again so, today. So the brown is my favorite, and it's not the one that I reach more for most often, but um, it's all around my favorite because it's an amazing beer, and I love brewing it. Mm -hmm. um, the grain bill is so big that it barely fits either in the grist case or in the mash tun. So every time you're making it, <laughs> you've got water coming in and you've got grain coming in. And every time you're making it, I have to manually stir the mash tun here. I don't have a mash mixer. So every time I'm making it, I'm stirring and stirring and stirring and my arms are getting really tired and I'm getting really sweaty. And I'm like, it's not all gonna fit. It's not all gonna fit. Oh, wow. <laughs> and every time it fits, 
but it's real close every time. So it's it's an exciting brew to do. It's a good arm workout. I bet. Yeah. So when you're not here, mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite things to do? Um, wow, the thing I miss most when I'm brewing is mountain biking. Um, I've been a competitive cyclist on and off for probably 10 years. Um, but nothing is like being on your bike in the woods by yourself. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably the, the number one thing that I would be doing if I wasn't brewing. Right. Well, you know, we've covered a lot of things. Are there any things that you can think of that you would like to talk about? We're just, you know, our, ideally we want to get a story of where you are today. And is there anything that you want to discuss that we haven't talked about yet? I can't think of anything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. That was a lot of fun. Thank you.